Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the reteach for Unit 3. These were the six most missed questions on the test from Unit 3. So what we're going to do for each of them is you should pause the video, try the question on your own first, and then look at the example to see if you got it correct. So number one, go ahead and pause the video, give it a try. Okay, so hopefully you've paused the video and have given it a try. You're supposed to be writing this equation in point-slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So first, um, most of you already know what m is, which is the slope. So I'm going to pick two points on the graph. I'll pick this one and this one. And we're going to do rise over run starting from the point on the left. So from the point on the left, we're going down 2, so negative 2, and then over 3. So our m value is negative 2 over 3. The rise is negative 2, and the run is 3. So negative 2 thirds is our slope. And if this was a multiple choice question, I would eliminate all the ones that had positive slopes. So I can see that this has a negative slope. And remember, this is called point slope. We have found the slope. Now we need a point. And it doesn't matter which point you use. So I'll just use one of the ones that I had just had, like this one right here. This point is at negative 6, comma, positive 8. So that's the point that I'm going to be using for my point, negative 6 being the x1 and 8 being the y1. So when I write my equation, using the formula there at the top, y minus y1, which is 8, equals m, our slope, which is negative 2 thirds, parentheses, x minus, and then the x1 is negative 6. So we end up here with a double negative. It's x minus, because the minus comes from the formula up here, guys. And then we also plug in the negative 6 for the x1, creating that double negative. Subtracting a negative is the same thing as a plus. So there's our final answer in point slope form. Now give number 2 a try. Pause the video and try number 2. All right, guys. Hopefully this one didn't take very long because you did not have to do any calculations on this. Um, we have a rate, a pool is leaking. First of all, leaking tells us that we're going to have a negative slope. And rate also tells us that that is the slope. So for us, our slope is negative 0.2. I think on the test, a lot of us forgot the negative because it is leaking. If you see something leaking, that means that it should be a negative slope. The next piece is that the pool began with this many gallons. Whatever your starting amount is, that is your y-intercept, your b. And it's a positive 4,125 gallons. Positive, guys. On the test, a lot of y'all chose negative. Can we have a negative number of gallons? No. So now we just plug them into our equation. y equals m x, don't forget the x in the equation, plus b. You could also have written it using f of x if you wished. So both of those answers are correct. You can write them with y or f of x. And a lot of times, um, this one isn't the case, but a lot of times they'll tell you which variables to use. Okay. So go ahead and give question 3 and 4 a try. Try both of them, questions 3 and 4. Pause the video. Hopefully you're unpausing the video right now because you've tried it on your own first. To graph this equation on number three, there were two ways you could have done it. You could have converted it into y equals mx plus b and saw and graphed it from there. But an easier way would have been to plug in zero to get your intercepts. So for instance, if I replace x with zero in the equation, Anything times 0 is 0. So now we've got negative 4y equals 12. And if I divide both sides by negative 4, 
I get y is negative 3. A lot of you didn't know what to do with that. You thought that was the y-intercept or the slope. And it is the y-intercept. You're right. When I plug in 0 for x, I get the y-intercept, which I can go ahead and plot on my graph. Okay? What a lot of us are forgetting is that you could do the same thing to find the x-intercept. This time, the x will stay the same, but the y will become 0. Okay, so 4 times 0 is 0. Boom. So now all we really have is 3x equals 12. And when we divide both sides by 3, x equals 4. So our x-intercept is positive 4. And now that I have at least two points, I can draw the line. But remember, you could have also solved and got it into y equals mx plus b form and graphed it from there. So let's go ahead and look at number four as well. Now this one, I would hope on the test that you had actually grabbed, graphed it on graph paper. We gave you graph paper to use. So plot the points negative two, two, and the point four, five. Okay. And we can go ahead and connect them, or we can find the rise over the run, because it is a line, guys. We can draw the line right now. But to me, it's easier to go ahead and find our rise over our run. It's rising 3, running 6. So our slope is rise 3, run 6, otherwise known as 1 half if you reduce it. So we can actually use that slope of 1 half to get more points. So start from the point on the left and rise 1, run 2 using that slope. Rise 1, run 2. So I found my y-intercept, but I still don't know my x-intercept, so I have to go backwards and go down 1, left 2. And then do it one more time to find that x-intercept. So I can see now there's my line, my x-intercept is negative 6, 0, and my y-intercept, sorry, I put that in the wrong place. My x-intercept is negative 6, 0, I just wrote it in the wrong location, and my y-intercept is 0, 3. Okay. All right, take a moment to pause the video and try questions 5 and 6. Let's look at number six first, because number six seemed, um, number five is from unit two, so we're just going to come back to that one. It was the last question on the test, and a lot of us struggled on it. Let's start with number six. Find the slope. So we need the m, and this is currently in standard form, ax plus by equals c. There are no m's there, so that's not going to help us find the slope at all. We need to convert it to y equals mx plus b form so that we can find our m. Remember, the slope is always attached to the x. So we're going to do that now. We are going to solve. So the key is to get it in y equals mx plus b form is that you have to get y alone. So always get rid of the x. 5x minus 5x is 0. So now we have negative 12y equals 24 minus 5x, because remember you cannot subtract an x from something that doesn't have an x. So I can't subtract 5x from 24. So we leave it exactly as you would read that, 24 minus 5x. I'm going to have them switch places now because it makes it a little bit easier for me. The negative 5x will go first, and the positive 24 will go second. And then my last step is to divide everything by negative 12. Because y was almost alone. A negative divided by a negative does make this positive 5 twelfths. I think a lot of us got it wrong on the test because of that. We didn't realize that. And then 24 divided by negative 12 is negative 2. A lot of us put negative 2. That's the y-intercept, guys. We were asking for the slope. The slope is attached to the x. Our slope is 5 twelfths. 
y equals mx plus b. Our m is 5 twelfths. Last problem is domain and range. On the test, I believe they asked for your range. We're going to go ahead and look at both to remind us. Um, I like to use Dr. XY to remind me that domain is X and range is Y. So let's start out with finding our domain. Okay, domain is X, so I put an X in the middle. And I draw lines from the point to the X axis. So the furthest left it goes is negative 4, so that's our minimum X value. And notice it has an open dot. So up here I'm going to put it, if you have an open dot, you use the less than symbol. If you have a closed dot, you're going to use the less than or equal to symbol. Okay. So in this case, because we have an open dot, we're just going to use less than. And then we draw another line from the point furthest to the right to the x-axis. And you can see the furthest to the right, it goes as 5, and it has a closed dot. Now we're gonna find the range. Remember, range are the y values, so we put a y in the middle, and we're drawing lines this time to the y-axis. Y really means up and down, like the y-axis. So we wanna see how low does our graph go. The lowest it goes is negative two, and the highest it goes is positive four. So negative two, leaving a blank there, all the way to positive four, least to greatest. The negative two has the closed dot, so we put less than or equal to, and the four has the open dot. On the test, it had asked you for the range, and a lot of you chose X, the domain. So make sure you're looking for the correct thing. Okay, guys, good luck on your retest. Make sure to study tonight, and I'll see you later. Have a great day. Happy Halloween.